Good evening. Good evening. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nice to see all of you here today uh, in this unique setting, uh, one that we'll be sure to remember years and years from now. A uh, warm welcome to all of our guests and visitors who are here with us tonight. Also, those of you who are joining us online. Um, if you are looking for just housekeeping things, uh, there is a restroom that's inside the ministry center. So if you need a restroom, there's that. There's also a, a porta potty available if you'd like to use that off to the side. Worship folders. If you did not get a worship folder, we can have an usher come through the aisle and hand one of those to you. Um, and then uh, be sure at some point to sign a connection card or scan the QR code in the worship folder here to mark your visit with us tonight. Uh, Tonight is obviously a, a, a big deal, right? Um, everybody recognizes that in our country, that, that, that we, we get to celebrate with family and friends, but even better than that, we get to celebrate what the true meaning of Christmas is really all about, uh, what the Christ child brings into our lives. And it's something that we're searching for, we're aching for, and it's something you can't buy and you couldn't get on a Black Friday sale, um, but it came in a crib. It was the birth of your Savior who's brought you peace. And we're going to talk about that in word and song tonight. Uh, the service that we're following is one that has been used since 1918. It's based off of this one that's done in King's College uh, over in England. Uh, it's, it's a service of lessons and carols. Now, one of the ways that the service typically starts is there is a, a young boy who is chosen from the choir of this uh, special choir and uh, he sings the opening solo um, of the verse of verse one of once in royal david city so following in that tradition we are going to have one of our sons of the congregation sing verse one and then the congregation is invited to join in singing the following verses merry christmas may god bless our worship here tonight people of God, in this Christmas season, it is our duty and delight to hear again the message of the angels. 
And in heart and mind to go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us, the Christ child lying in a manger. Let us read and learn in Holy Scripture the story of the loving purposes of God from the first days after our fall into sin to the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for people all over the world who would delight with us to know the good news of Jesus Christ and who would join with us in singing his praises. Let us pray for the people of this city and for all those in our own congregation. And because this would please our God, let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who are sad, the lonely and the unloved, and the elderly and the little children. We especially remember all those who do not know the Lord Jesus, those who do not love him, and those who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Finally, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us in heaven, who live in greater light than we, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, who died in faith, and who live before the throne of God and praise him each day in his temple. We confess that we are united with them as we are united with one another. To sum up all these petitions, let us pray as Christ himself taught us. For our Lord's Prayer, we'll join in singing that together. Sisters and brothers in Christ, may the Lord bless us as we lift our hearts and voices in songs of praise. We continue with our singing of the next hymn, On Christmas Night All Christians Sing.
When God created the heavens and the earth, when he created this place for us to live, it was absolutely perfect. But sin spoiled all that when Adam and Eve broke the commands of God and brought with that all the results of sin, namely death. But God gave the promise of a Savior to fallen man, and that promise is what we hold to as well today, the promise of a Savior. A lesson from Genesis chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is God's word. We join in the hymn response. Centuries later, a man named Abraham came along in history and God designated that through his family line, all nations would be blessed because all nations, uh, because his family line would bear that of the Savior. And so therefore we are blessed. A lesson from Genesis 22. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the scar stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. 
And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is God's word. We join in the hymn response. Roughly 750 years before the Christ child was born, the prophet Isaiah foretold that he would be a great king, a king unlike any other, because his throne would rule and reign over earth and heaven. A lesson from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is God's word. We join in singing the hymn response.
Isaiah tells us of a peace that will not be found anywhere in this earth, a peace, a peace that's unparalleled that Messiah will bring to us. A lesson from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sack around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a chi little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is God's word. We join in our hymn response. The angel Gabriel came to a young girl and informed her that God had very special plans for her. Uh, plans that there is no possible way she could have expected or seen coming, but that she was going to bear the mother of God. A lesson from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is God's word. We join in singing our hymn response. Christians have shown different ways of showing respect 
for the gospel account of St. Luke chapter 2 in different ways. Uh, the church in the of the nativity in Bethlehem, there's actually only one door and it's shorter. So that way, no matter who you are, if you're a president, a prince, or a pauper, everyone has to bow their heads into the place where the Christ child was born. In the past, soldiers removed their armor, kings removed their crowns out of respect for the Gospel of St. Luke. We stand, so please, let's stand for this. And we'll join in reciting the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 together. We read together. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the earth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room available for them. This is the gospel of Christ our King. You may be seated and we join in singing our hymn response. of angels announced to shepherds on third shift that Christmas night that the Messiah had been born. A Messiah who had brought them peace, peace that the world cannot find. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the gospel of Christ our King. We join in the hymn response. Kings from foreign nations came to pay tribute to this Christ child who was born. This Savior was not just king for the Jews, but kings for all people, a king for us. Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. 
For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is God's word. We join in our hymn response. <coughs> What a mystery it is of who Christ is. God made flesh. Or as John puts it, the word of God made flesh. That the infinite, eternal God would contain himself to a finite being. It blows our human hearts and minds. But that is the demonstration of God's love, that he came to walk among us, with us, but most importantly, for us. A lesson from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made, known, was made through him, the world does, did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of Christ our King. We join in our hymn response. Friends in Jesus, grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. Uh, one verse I just want to share with you again tonight. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. This is God's word. Friends, it was going to be the best Christmas ever. When I was growing up as a kid... I have four brothers, and every Christmas, Thanksgiving, gift exchange. And that year, Big Eve got my name. Now what you have to understand is, when I was six, Steve was everything to me, okay? My big brother was the coolest. I mean, he wrestled. He played guitar. He, 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 he had a girlfriend. He was 16. Oh, when I grow up, I want to be just like 
Steve. And all that Christmas, that Thanksgiving, when we drew names, Steve had my name. Oh, from Thanksgiving until we opened up our presents a month later, I was sitting on pins and needles. I was waiting with bated breath for the time to finally get there. And oh, finally, finally after a month of painstaking agony, it came. Oh, my mind just absolutely raced of all the amazing things that Steve could have gotten me. And my, my heart felt like it was beating so fast it was going to leap right out of my chest. And then, then we, he brought over this beautiful present. Oh, it was gorgeous. It was the most beautiful present that I'd ever seen before in my entire life. And my, my fingers itched. And I just launched into that paper like a lion tearing apart its prey. And there it was, I held in my hands a stick of deodorant. <laughs> I was six. <sighs> I swallowed all of that sadness. And I fought back every tear. And I said with a shaky voice, Thank you, Steve. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Would someone else like to open up a present? <laughs> it took all of five seconds for my old and my parents to break up laughing and my mom slapping my brother. And I looked up confused. I didn't understand. And, I, and she said, he's kidding with you. He wanted you to throw a fit. That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted to see on Christmas Day. He wanted you to get all upset. I, I st I, and then Steve said, I got a different gift for you. And he came over and oh, I ripped that open. And sure enough, it was a Miami Hurricanes hat and a Miami Hurricanes t-shirt, which was Steve's favorite team at the time. So, of course, that made it my team. And oh, it was the best Christmas ever then. Oh, it was an unforgettable Christmas, a memorable Christmas. You've probably been doing that the last few days and doing that tonight, right? Thinking about different memories of Christmas, Christmases that you have treasured in your hearts. Whether it was a get-together with family or friends or a special gift, uh, a, a dinner, a meal, a recipe, a tradition, something that you do, you, you treasure that. This Christmas, I guarantee for all of us here, this is going to be that we're going to treasure. Because 10, 15 years from now, I'm going to say to you, hey, you remember that? Remember that, that first Christmas that we had in the tent? <laughs> you remember that? And you're going to hold on to that and you're going to take that with you every single day until Jesus calls you home. Remember, remember that time in the tent? She had an unforgettable Christmas. He Mary... Mary, like any other mother who was pregnant with a child, had planned and prepped and done everything that she could to get everything ready for this baby to be born. Without a doubt, she'd gone out to the market and she'd grabbed every lotion, aloe, powder, cream, anything that could tackle a rash that would rear its ugly head on her baby's bottom. She had knitted together this cute little onesie. It was blue because she knew that she was having a boy. And her, her husband, who was a crafty carpenter, without a doubt, had, had put those carpentry skills to work and made this beautiful olive wood bassinet for this baby boy. But, but then all of a sudden, what happened? There was a wrench thrown into their plans for this child's birth. You see, the government, the guy that was in charge, he, he wanted to find a way to tax the people. And so he sent everybody to their hometowns to register for this census. And so what did Mary have to do? Eight and a half months pregnant, she had to haul herself up donkey and travel the 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. But when they got there, oh, there's no room. No room. Really? Not, she's pregnant. You can't find any room. Nope. No. Where did she have to go? She was relegated with to the where the cattle 
and the sheep and the goats were in there. Then it happened. It was memorable. Her water broke and out came seven pounds, three ounces of wiggling, worming little baby Jesus. So she wrapped him in strips of cloth and didn't have that finely crafted olive wood bassinet, but rather a feeding trough for the cattle that she had to shoo away. It was a Christmas she wouldn't forget because then, all of a sudden, in come bursting these shepherds, these total strangers who start talking this crazy nonsense of a hallelujah chorus that they just saw light up the night sky of Bethlehem. And they said, ma'am, you don't understand. We've come to worship your child because the angels told us where we would find him, wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. So this, this has to be him. This has to be our prince of peace. This has to be the king, even though he really didn't look like one. He wasn't draped in the purple of a prince. He wasn't sitting in a palace. He was closer to the manure than he was the majesty. Wasn't the kind of savior maybe people would have expected but exactly the kind of savior that the world needed him to be. One who could live for us. And one who could give up his life for us. One who could eventually climb out of his cradle and crawl onto a cross to pay for all of our shortcomings, all of our failures, and bring us something that we most desperately crave and can't find anywhere else in the world. Peace. Peace with God. Peace with ourselves. If you are a, a guest or a visitor who is joining with us tonight, thank you so much for coming. Um, I know it's not easy going into a strange location and putting yourself out there, but we are so, so happy that you're here with us tonight. And I hope and I pray that you come back again and again because, you know, week after week, we talk about this. This news of what Jesus brings into our lives. Peace. Jesus loves you, Jesus has forgiven you, and Jesus wants to walk with you. And I pray that you treasure that this Christmas, just as Mary took all these things, all these events, and, and pondered them in her heart. I pray that you treasure them and ponder them in your heart today and every day as you walk with Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. May God bless you this Christmas. Merry Christmas. With that, all God's people say amen. 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 May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At uh, this time, please take a moment to, if you haven't done so already, uh, you can either mark your visit here with us by scanning the QR code, or you can also fill out one of the connection cards that are in the back uh, out there as well. Um, ushers are going to be coming through bringing an offering. Please do not feel obligated to bring an offering. This is just a oh, sure that like to uh, reflect on the love that Jesus has shown us and we like to bring an offering in return. So if you would like to participate with that, you may. May God bless us as we bring him our offerings of thanks.
Receive then this Christmas blessing. May he who by his incarnation gathered things earthly and heavenly into one, fill us with such joy that comes with the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The choir is going to join in, in leading us a hymn, which is a combination of a song called Peace, Peace, and then also Silent Night. So the congregation will be in, invited to join in singing Silent Night. If you got your candles lit, you can pull those out right now. And can we, can we kill these lights? All right.
I wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Thank you so much to everybody who helped set things up. Thank you for the choir, for beautifying our service. Thank you so much, just first of all, for coming um, and, and being able to celebrate Christmas with you. Um, we do regular worship services for Christmas Day tomorrow at 930. We'll be back here once again. You're more than welcome to join us. I hope you do. Um, if you're traveling this Christmas season, may God bless your travels. And uh, I hope to see each and every single one of you again soon. Merry Christmas. I'm going to walk out the back and then you can usher yourselves out. God blessings to you this Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas.